Yeah, what, I mean, I'm sorry. 7:45 will be the last drink we serve. 12:45. 12:45. All right. Yeah. yeah. There we go. 12:45. I try to get a little extra. 12:45 will be the last drink, and and everybody, we try to get them out no later than 1:15, except for the people just cleaning up, and everybody should be out of the building by 1:30. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Okay. So Tom, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so please. Tom, uh, the Fidelity House, it's, it, it, it's a dance? Or, I mean, well, uh, tickets, or what is Nikki it? Metropolis yes. is, ho is, is putting this on with his wife, yes. and we're certainly going to give them a hand doing it. Um, and it costs nothing to get in. We're going to have, they're going to have a DJ and food and just a donation, and the proceeds will go to the Fidelity House. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving on, request from Monotomy Grill and Tavern for a late night event as well on December 31st. Billy. Yes. Um, um, same thing? Yeah, just to try to keep it in Arlington, you know. Food will be served right until the end. We'll, the, we'll probably give last call at the tables around 1230, you know, so quarter one for the bar and that'll be it, you know. We have a live show, entertainment, Tony Lynn Washington. So it should be a fun night. Great. Will the we'll subject to all conditions are set forth? Second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Billy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we're going to move the request for the uh, Common Ground Arlington above the license renewals. Rodney? Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays to everybody. Same to you. Uh, basically, the scenario is easy. It's our first year. We're not really looking to do any entertainment. We're not looking to do a big party. My original plan, my hope, was to sign someone up for a black tie affair in the back room. I really don't think that that's going to happen in the last week. But basically, we just want to have the feeling that people can come there, enjoy. We're always open late um, for food. So it would be nice to just know that I can encourage people that at 12 o'clock when the ball drops, you don't have to immediately move out. Uh, last call would definitely be quarter of one, and it would be a, an expedited uh, people leaving very quickly. So I think that, I think that night, once, once everything happens, I think it's not gonna really be that hard. I think it's just gonna be nice and smooth to be able to let people know that they don't have to immediately leave right at 12. Move, move approval, approval subject to our conditions as set forth. Second. A motion a second for the discussion Dan. Uh, so I'm just curious how do you think uh, with the experience you've been having with your business so far and uh, neighbors and because you, you you live in a neighborhood that has been more sensitive about the noise and than some other ones I'm curious how's, how's that been going uh, I think it's getting better I think people are starting to realize that we did do a lot of soundproofing um, whenever I have an event in the back I'm always uh, on site to make sure that we, we keep within bounds. Um, I will tell you right now that I'll be much more mindful if, if ever I decide to have a band back there again. Um, I need to know who the band is first. I need, to, I need to actually see them play somewhere else before they play with us. We had a phenomenal band in there um, within the first month. I regularly went outside to make sure what the, what the noise level was. It wasn't, wasn't bad, but I would still like to err on the side of caution. Um, so I definitely, moving forward, I want to make sure I definitely talk to them first um, before I randomly see a band come in that's, you know, potentially got just a little too much equipment. Okay. So, but otherwise, the neighbors, I, I'm trying very hard to, to make sure that the neighbors realize that everything with deliveries, we were not the only one that were getting deliveries right in front of them. Um, Fusion Taste, I know the, ocean from, the owner from Fusion Taste, he's a nice gentleman, but they regularly were getting deliveries that the semis were parked right in front of their homes as well. I think since we were the new place, they automatically assumed that, okay, new business is coming in and they're taking over our streets. That's really not the case. I've been in contact with the owners of each of my vendors and slowly but surely, I think they're noticing that that's no longer an issue. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? So we asked for the name of the neighbors that complained the most. No, we can't, Rodney. I'm kidding. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I hope is it, things going well. Business? Yes, yes, and they're very they're very nice people, and I understand I understand their concern, and I just 
I, I try to put it out there as much as I can that you know it's not falling on deaf ears. It's mm -hmm. something that we're definitely very, we want to be part of the community, we want to help make the center a real uh, nice place to go um, for each and every person, no matter what your like is. Um, you know, it's just a, it's an ongoing pro process, but I think we're, I think we're getting there. Thanks for that attitude. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, moving on to license renewals for contractor drain layer, wine and malt, malt beverages only restaurant, all alcohol restaurant, all alcohol club, all alcohol package store, theater license, common victualler, uh, food vendor, class one, class two, class two non-premise and auctioneer, uh, lodging houses and innkeepers, public entertainment, automatic amusement, and secondhand dealers. So move approval on all of them, all subject to all conditions that have been set forth. Joe, did you want second. to raise that issue? I, I, I will second it. I, I will note, I think we should note that we did um, receive um, a letter from um, the secretary of the uh, Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee ad advising us that um, they have run into some um, uh, issues with cleanliness and, and the condition of the, the exterior of uh, one of the buildings um, uh, at uh, 94 Summer Street that's uh, that Arlington Liquors, which is uh, applying for uh, renewal. And there, there have been some issues with um, trash and such. And unfortunately, uh, I, we have, for anybody who's watching, uh, we have extended hours this week for, for the, uh, the um, holidays, before the holidays. But um, in speaking with our staff, I know that our staff was in touch with um, the uh, liquor store and they have indicated uh, that they, they uh, understand the situation and they will take steps to address it. So um, I, I'm okay moving ahead with that one right now, but I think that we should monitor it as we go forward. I agree. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, um, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on, uh, traffic rules and orders. Um, for approval, a solar power letter of support for uh, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a letter that was forwarded to me by a member of Sustainable Arlington uh, that we apparently missed. Um, we missed the first cut of signing on, uh, but they will be sending this letter to Governor-elect, or probably at that point, then Governor Baker. Uh, and you could see from the uh, provided document uh, the number of communities from across the state, either members of the select board, the select board as a whole, uh, city managers, town managers, mayors signed on. Um, so given Arlington's status as a green community, uh, participation in Solarize Arlington, uh, the fact that we're going to be trying to get solar panels on our own uh, school roofs soon, I thought this would be um, something that I'd like to ask the board to consider signing on to. And if the board signed on as a whole, I'd sign on as a whole as well, and we could uh, add our signatures to this letter that would be sent. So moved. I'll second it. Yes, Dan. So I actually, um, I actually have some concerns about signing on to this one. Uh, I, support the, I support alternative energy and the increase in using alternative energy. I support conservation. I've been delighted to support the Green Communities Act because it talks about general about goals in terms of reducing those fossil fuels and and, uh, and and increasing sustainability. My problem with this document is we're being asked to endorse a very particular solution, and it's a financial bet on solar that, frankly, I just don't think that I'm equipped to make, and I'm not sure the governor should be entitled to to make that either. Uh, I think about things like hydro and, uh, and uh, you know, the first title is coming on site on, on, on online in Massachusetts. Um, I think about the wind and the off and offshore wind, and I also think about future innovation. And I'm just, uh, if this was more written more broadly, I mean, the things that the Arlington Green, or excuse me, the Green Communities Act did right, I'm delighted about. This one is a technology argument, and I'm less enthused about supporting that one. Um, I'll follow that up if it's okay and I um I agree with you and when we first um, when I first spoke with Adam about this um, I brought up similar concerns that um, I think solar is an important part of a larger issue that like you said hydro um, onshore offshore wind and I think that solar should be a, an important part of 
a you know more diverse portfolio. And um, in talking with Adam, I um, came to think that as a municipality, I think that perhaps solar is one of the largest um, parts that a town can control. As so, I, I was, my thoughts was that it, I was okay signing on with this as um, you know a member of the board because I think that town should move forward with it. But with that being said, it should be a um, should be part of a large portfolio that does have you know other ulterior um, resources of clean energy. Um, so that's um, just a, a little rebuttal, but that's how what I'm thinking on it. But um, either way. Yes, Kevin. Are you timing us to three minutes or something like that? No, that's John. That's no. I'm going to answer. So uh, with due respect to my colleagues, uh, I, I'm still willing to sign it at least as an individual selectman. Um, it, it, nothing in the letter to me, I'm assuming you're referring to the letter we have here, here in the packet, mm -hmm. is excluding other forms, and the goal is 20% solar by 2025. So anyhow, I'm just willing to do it as an individual selectman. I don't know. Diane wants to speak to that, and Joe and I. Joe? I mean, I'm willing to. So I withdraw my motion. Obviously, the board, as a whole, does want to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's reasonable. I mean, I think if we look through this, a lot of um, selectmen and counselors, actually most of these are actually individuals who have signed on, and I know that we, we have taken that route with some of the resolutions that have gone um, before town meeting as well. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't think with a resolution uh, along these lines, I think we should be a unified board if we're writing to the governor on, a, on an issue of, of import and, and uh, hearing that there are some concerns with the board signing on. I think I'm happy with that course. Um, I, I will be signing on in, individually. Um, I, I, I do like the spirit and I think that it's consistent with a lot of what we've, we've tried to do here in town, but um, I, I, don't, I think that we should be a unified board if we're pushing the, putting the, something like this forward. You do think that we should be? I think we should be unified, and, and whereas some members don't feel, don't feel comfortable with the board taking a, a vote per se, I, I feel completely comfortable just doing it as individuals if we so choose. Okay. But what are you saying? Are you signing on as an individual? I will be signing on as yes, an individual. Okay. Yes. So that's the two of us. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, Dan. I, I certainly, I, I don't want to say that I think that it's inappropriate for this board to consider. I absolutely do. And I, I mean, I, I, and so if that's the, I, I'm not objecting to us talking about this. I think it's a yeah, wonderful yeah, thing yeah, for no, us to, okay. So, um, I want love and comfort and agreement on the board. Yes. <laughs> You'll get love, love comfort, comfort, and agreement. agreement. Comfort this and one, joy. This one gets love, <laughs> comfort, and a nay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Diane, do you want to? Um, I'm, the I'm of the same opinion of um, my previous three colleagues. I was just wondering if the town manager, what would be the most benefit if you had um, you sign it and four of the five selectmen, or would it be better where there are five selectmen and four signatures that you just sign it on behalf of the town, or you don't have an opinion either way? I, I, I you know, I don't know that it matters much. I think if based on the way it has been signed, uh, as I think selectman Kiro or I think Selectman Kira pointed out. But no, it seems a number of communities selectmen individually signed on. And, and it was probably a similar situation. I don't know that, but mm -hmm. it was probably a situation where there wasn't a unanimous vote, but the board member wanted to sign on. So I, I'd be happy with that. And I don't want, I think uh, Mr. Kira is absolutely right that it probably is inappropriate to sign on the Arlington Board of Selectmen if it's a 3 2 or 4 1 vote, because mm -hmm. it would, wouldn't really show you know, unanimous support from the board. I agree. Okay, mm -hmm. and I, I'll sign it individually. Okay, so we don't, will. That was an affirmative. You said yes. Okay. So we'll take a vote, and if you want to sign it, please feel free. And if not, that's okay. I think Kevin withdrew his motion, so we actually don't have a yeah, motion on the wanna, table. You know, you two, yeah. I think that's very fair. Okay. I'm so, willing yeah. to sign it, so let's just do it individually. Okay. Uh, do, do you want to make that motion? Yes. Uh, I move that um, if people want to sign on individually, um, that they do so. <laughs> 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 was that close and, to legal? And I'll that communicate was... it accordingly to the letter uh, organizers. Thank you. S second. We have a, a motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We just took a collective decision that individual conscience still reigns. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> but perhaps, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Yes. Perhaps at another time we should craft a position on all. Well, I, we, it's one of our goals, I guess, so we don't need yeah. to. But I'm yeah, open to that. You know, to find a word in that everybody here is happy with, because we all support it. Hmm. I, I definitely, and I think the, the model of what we did with the green community stuff is really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Of course. Um, we'll go back to Adam, a uh, new library. Director. All right. Uh, so thank you for your, your, your patience. We have our new library director actually started here in Arlington today. He is almost an hour early. Uh, I made him seem 20 minutes late. I uh, was in the routine of the 7.15 meeting time, so I apologize for that. Uh, so tonight we have uh, Peter Strazero. You did start today, right? Today was day one at the Robbins Library. You can come up to Please, the, come the on microphone. Uh, so we, we know we were all uh, saddened when Ryan left to go to Illinois. Uh, and uh, there's some concern about how we would replace someone with the energy and passion for libraries that Ryan brought to Arlington. Uh, but as we went through the interview process and came down to make our final decision, it became very clear that we were very fortunate to find a talented professional who showed equal, if not uh, superior, passion uh, for library services and also a passion for Arlington based on uh, a family history here as well as uh, just a love for the community. Uh, so Peter comes here with a great deal of library experience coming up through the ranks uh, and most recently serving as the director of libraries in Winthrop, uh, but also uh, having a lot of speaking engagements and uh, notoriety in the library community for innovation and uh, really moving libraries into the 21st century. So. With that, I uh, wanted to introduce Peter to the board and allow the board to, uh, you know, I guess Peter maybe tell uh, the board a little bit about himself and give the board an opportunity to ask any questions that they might have. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good evening. Thanks, guys. Please, yeah, tell us. Forgive my, yourself. forgive my tardiness. No, not at all. We will blame Adam completely. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry. Alex, glad to accept it. Was a goal session or whatever? It's me. It's me. Please welcome and I, tell us. Sure. I, uh, I just want to, I want to thank our town manager and our, our board of library trustees and everyone involved in the process. Um, I'm very humbled to be here. Um, it's been a long time goal of mine. I've worked in libraries for just over a decade, about 11 years, um, and kind of rode the ranks, started as a, as a page putting away books and working in my college library, became a librarian, worked in teen services for a few years, uh, went and worked in reference for a few years, and spent the last uh, few years in Winthrop as their library director, um, always kind of focused on the Robbins Library. Um, my, so my grandparents lived here their, all their lives, and my, my mother grew up here, uh, spent her whole childhood in Arlington. So I spent a lot of my childhood in Arlington. And um, I, a, lot of, a lot of what put me into libraries in the first place was the Robbins Library. Um, I spent a lot of time there as a child with my grandparents, with my mother, and um, I had a lot, of, a lot of great memories here as a child, like chasing Paul Revere down the street on Patriot's <laughs> Day and sledding not so successfully at Robbins Farm and rollerblading on the bricks up to the Arlington Heights and uh, on and on and on. But I, I did spend a lot of time in the library and that's part of the reason that I went this way. So for me, this is a real, uh, a real come full circle moment. And I don't want to sound uh, too cheesy and I know the town's watching, but I feel like Arlington really has given to me a, a lot in my life and uh, this is a great opportunity to come and, and thank Arlington and, and give back, um, especially in the place that I care about the most, uh, the library. So I'm very humbled, very honored to be here. Thank you very much. And, um that, uh, that's really great to hear. I think you know, you'll hear a lot of the same, we say a lot of the same things that you know. That was the that was the ten cent version. Yeah, um. and, uh, <laughs> and so no, I'm uh, very happy to have you. Uh, questions from the board? Yes, uh, Dan. Uh, tell me about Star Wars. <laughs> oh, Star Wars. Um, so uh, when I started as a librarian, I didn't make much money, and I had a lot of student loans um, for my my master's in library science. So I was looking for a way to supplement income. Um, I'm a lifelong learner and a lifelong lover of Star Wars, so I started a, a Star Wars club at the library that I worked at, and it was a, a big hit, and uh, the town next door said, hey, would you ever come here and, and do the Star Wars club at their library? And I said, if, if you pay me, I will. <laughs> so, I, so I did, and, um, and then that was a big hit, and then the, the town next to them asked me to come, and uh, now it's been five years, and I've been to 175 libraries in Massachusetts. Um, and seen like 7,000 children and children and families in the Commonwealth, and in Rhode Island and in New Hampshire, teaching kids about Star Wars and connecting it back to lifelong learning at the library and all the all the books. There's there's six Star Wars movies, but there's like a thousand Star Wars books, um, and the library is usually a big proponent of those books. So I um, that was it. So I, I it kind of gave me a 
an opportunity to travel around in the state to learn a lot about libraries and different libraries and to see how different libraries worked, the different forms of government that existed there and how the friends worked, how the library directors worked and teen services and children's services. And it gave me this, this great opportunity to learn uh, faster, I think, than I would have. So, so I've been doing that for, for five years. Um, and I think, I think I did it here. I think I did it in Arlington a few years ago and I've, I've done it in Lexington. I've, I've done it all, all over the area. Thank you very much. That's You're very welcome. interesting. Yes. Jill. Thank you. And Thank I can't you. escape it. I can't. <laughs> well, you did. I you just, made, you I, put it on your resume. Otherwise, I just I accepted known. the best job I've ever been offered in my whole life. And the first question is about Star Wars. <laughs> it's going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Because I noted, um, you know, I, I, I noted when I saw it, kind of the summary of your experience when Adam first let us know about your appointment. I, the first thought that went through my head, I said, this is a real millennial guy and this is great to get the current generation interested in reading and such. Then I went to your resume and, and uh, you've presented at the American Library Association, New England Library Association, the, the title of your, of your talk was Stand Up and Shout the Millennial Leader right. and Changing Direction. So I'm excited by that. But I went further down the resume and, and my heart was filled with horror because you may or may not know that your predecessor somehow managed to um, <clears throat> work me into a Clifford the Big Red Dog suit. And I see that one of your previous internships was as a cast member at Walt Disney World, yep. which fills me with fear about what you might have up your sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> can't escape Star Wars and I can't escape Disney World. Yeah, I learned, um, I, so when I graduated high school, I went to college for about five minutes and decided I didn't need uh, to go to college. I was gonna, you know, remember being 18 and conquering the world. So I uh, ran away to Florida and got a job um, at Disney World. And after about a year, I realized how much I did need to go to college and <laughs> did, did need to go to grad school. But, um, but it was the beginning of my customer service experience. Um, so that's, that's the, what I don't, people have differences of opinion, but I say that working in a library is very customer service. Um, you have a product and you have a customer and we're here for them, for the people of, of Arlington. And that's where I learned it, at, at Disney World. So. I didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't dress up as anything special, but I, I learned a lot there. Ah, fantastic. And just one last, last thing. I mean, you have an impressive resume. For someone so young, you have a lot of uh, experience uh, here. And one thing that also uh, jumped out to me is that the uh, Win Winthrop uh, town manager had appointed you as the co-chair of, of the town's um, cultural, cultural district committee. Yes, yep. And you, you, you may or may not know that our um, Commission on Arts and Culture, is lo uh, along with members of our um, Tourism and Economic Development Committee, have been meeting recently talking about the possibility of applying for a cultural district designation here in Arlington. So I, did I just want to put you on notice that we may come knocking at your door sure. um, to, uh, to talk to you about your experience. We didn't there get to the, uh, in Winthrop, or there, I mean, I didn't get to. I, I've, yeah. uh, I cashed it in for Arlington. Um, but um, we didn't get to the point where we actually put in for the application. Right. But it's, um, as you probably know, it's a long process to get to that point. Um, you, you're supposed to spend you know, 12 to 18 months developing and getting things prepared so that your application goes through. So I was uh, a proponent of that work. Well, we may come knocking at your door. I know there's a meeting on February 4th at the library, as coincidence would have it, so. Okay. <laughs> just thank Good you and welcome, thank you. thank you very much. Welcome back, darling. Thank you very much, Diane. I just want to say, first of all, I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, thank you. I had three jobs in high school. One of my first was a page over the Robbins Library for five years. And back then, in the ancient days, um, there wasn't anything online and uh, all the reference materials, there were three to five copies of everything. And I can't tell you how many high school kids got jobs as pages because they saw I was getting all these reference materials first. Right. Um, so it, it's a vastly different world now. So I'm really excited to hear about um, your experience with um, dealing with kids all the way to um, our elders in terms of getting sure. them involved, but especially the younger group. One of the things when I was over at the Robbins Library as a page that I noticed, and I don't think it exists now, but there, in terms of staff, sort of um, uh, gathering with each other outside of work. Um, it, I, I was in the day of we had a new library director who came in, and Jim Fish, he threw away all the books which was very painful. Um, so w I used to organize monthly um, uh, restaurant meetings, started a softball team, started sort of a mezzanine, um, see how fast you could you know, get the books back on the shelf, shelving contest. And that really seemed to bring everybody together, especially since, in my opinion, it was then and still is today, that similar to teachers and other pr professions, um, I think they should be paid a lot more 
were for all the hard work they do, but they don't do it for the money. Right. Um, and so I think on top of all the experience that you're bringing with what my um, colleagues have cited, um, whatever you can bring in terms of you know combining the staff that the, the manager agrees um, would be appropriate. Um, I always thought that was a plus and a benefit. And I know years after I left, you know, when I'd go back in the library, they're like, we don't do things like that anymore. So you know, being cognizant of, of the times that we're in and you know what you can sure. and can't do. Um, but what, whatever way that you see appropriate, not anything that I cited, um, that you feel is sort of a, you know, a staff kudos. Um, I don't know if it's a sort of system to recognize somebody every every sure. month or what. I'm sure you'll have good ideas on that. Um, but where we have such a dedicated staff and they do so much, right. um, I, I'm the best ideas are stolen. I've always heard. Exactly. So, um, exactly. So don't worry. And welcome to Arlington. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Peter, welcome to Arlington. Hi, really Kevin. Thank you. Good to have you here. Um, we, you can't tell this by looking, but I'm the oldest member of the board here who actually went to high school with uh, the previous library director to Ryan, Marion Remert Loud, who I think really did quite a bit to pull us uh, into the electronic age, if you will, and then Ryan continued doing an excellent job, and there's no question you will as well. Two quick questions. What's, sure. your, what's your favorite book you read this year? Frankenstein. Oh, by? The, the original? The original, 1818, oh. Mary Shelley. Yeah. The, uh, in Winthrop, it was called the Public Library and Museum. Yes. Is our library a museum? Uh, uh, it seems like you have a, a local history room. Forgive me, I spent, today was my first day, I spent most of it here, yeah. uh, not, <laughs> not there. Yeah. Um, but it, it seems like you have a nice uh, local history collection. We, we had, um, uh, I say, arguably one of the, the best in Greater Boston in Winthrop, just by chance. Um, lots of old documents, lots of a huge Abraham Lincoln collection, um, signed letters by Mark Twain and Frederick Douglass and incredible people you can't imagine. And there's no reason that it's all in Winthrop. I, I don't know why it is, but, um, but so we had it as a, like a cold storage archives that was alarmed and um, treated it very much as a museum as well. Hmm. So we had like gla glass cases and museum space that could be rented and, and visited, um, whereas you guys have more traditional uh, local history collection. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. Moving on. Correspondence received. Um, Arlington recipient of Annual Town Report Award. Again. From Number one. The, uh, Jeffrey Beckwith from the MMA and the Boston Logan Runway 33L impacting Arlington from uh, Peter Jones. Um, I will say, I've, I've, um, Peter Jones did reach out to us and I um, have been in contact with him as well as uh, the FAA, so we, um, we're gonna see what we can do to uh, take care of uh, so does this, come here? this issue. Um, I don't, we'll get to that after. Oh, okay. um, but, so do we have any motions? So you're, you're working on it? Yeah, I'm working so on it. So I, I move that we uh, ask the uh, chairman to uh, work with uh, Belmont, is it? Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and others to help us do what we can to minimize any impact from a runway from Logan Airport. Is that? Well, I'm not, I'm not so much working with uh, different communities, more so with, um, I've been. CAC. Yeah, uh, the, there is a, the CAC, yes. The advisory yes. committee. The community. The Community Advisory Committee, which is doing the Logan Impact Study, and as well as um, the FAA, who regularly uh, receives complaints. Um, yes, Joe. I, I also um, was in touch with Mr. Ciano, who's our representative on the CAC, mm -hmm. uh, Frank Ciano, and um, there, there is currently um, posted by the uh, State Environmental Resources Office is a, a, a large environmental design review document and they have a January 20th um, deadline for um, feedback to be given. And so Mr. Ciano has offered, and he'll, he told me that it would be fine to, to mention it, that, that if we wanted to, um, as a board, send correspondence and, and feedback on that, he would be willing to help us draft an appropriate response as he has been Arlington's rep on, on this advisory committee um, and, um, and is, is familiar with the issues. Um, I also spoke to Representative Garbley on it because I understand that the CAC is, um, is going to be expiring and going out of, out of life soon and 
there was legislation that was passed to create a new version of this advisory committee and Arlington was left off. Arlington was left off, Belmont was left off, Watertown was left off, and they were all impacted by, by this, this new thing. So um, I think Mr. Garbley said that he has tried to work on that to, to, to remedy that situation, but Mr. Ciano has offered assistance uh, with, with the chair. Yes, yeah, so perhaps we should uh, work on preparing a memo um, with Mr. Ciano's help um, yeah. to have for the January 20th meeting? Yeah. That one? Well, January 20th is the deadline for comments to be sent to the state, so okay. whatever it is. So. Yeah. I'll just say that my, uh, I thought this, the, the follow-on presentation to the correspondence was very eye-opening for me because I, I guess I've always had the, you know, the basic theory that when you live relatively near an airport, there's a certain expectation that you're going to hear airplanes. And I, but what this showed me was that what's happening is that it's being very concentrated over specific homes and streets and that we're not all signing on for the airport, that like specific streets are signing on to the airport. And that does not have, the, that does not have a sense of fairness about it to me. So the, this presentation definitely galvanized me on the issue far more than I had been uh, on, based on what I knew before. Excellent. So perhaps we'll work on as uh, prepare a letter um, that will come from the board to um, get to the CAC by January 20th and um, we can all um, continue to see what we can do to just send Frank your way. Uh, you know, I bet I have his email. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Was that Mr. Grilly's motion? Yes, yeah. it was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Tatum, as a matter of fact. I got it right there pretty much. So, do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. And? And congratulations. On the winning the on the, for the winning the award for the report. Oh, thank you. Yes, congratulations to the board as well. The board's the first report. The board's the leader of the. Uh, What's uh, that? The board is the first report. In the, uh, <laughs> oh wait, who is chairman for that? Um, who would have been you. <laughs> <laughs> was it our picture that did it, Adam? It was our picture, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, th th Mr. Greeley, I'm, do I'm doing you proud. I hope. <laughs> The congratulations, the, the bulk of the congratulations has to go to Joan Roman. Yeah. She, she's the, you know, the, all the effort behind it. And the departments and commissions and boards and committees that put together the information. Thank you. Um, so before we get to new business, I would like to, um, we have, so for the crowd at home, we do have one individual um, in the crowd. So do you want to come to the microphone and let us know why you're here? Um, <clears throat> there was a letter sent. Um, I believe to you guys. Can you have your uh, name and address, please? Sure. Alexander Kuczynski, um, 28 Central Street, but I own Arlington Liquors. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, there was a letter sent, um, I think, by the Minutemen um, Committee that does the cleanups, informing us that there's a large amount of trash behind the liquor store. And I just wanted to come here to tell you that that issue has been addressed and resolved. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate that. We did. Um, we did speak to that under the license renewals, um, fortunately, before you got here. But I do appreciate you coming and letting us know that. And um, we appreciate you working with us. Sure, sure. There's, we hung signs and put up bins. And hopefully, that will resolve any future. Thank you Great. very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And, Thank and you. your license was renewed, by the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Thank you. Um, Thanks for coming. Finally, uh, new business, Doug. None. Thank you, sir. Adam. Uh, one piece of new business just to mention at uh, the meeting, I, I know the board knows, uh, but I, I feel it's important to, to talk about it. We, we are losing Chief Fred Ryan uh, to the MBTA. Uh, he has been selected uh, and accepted the position of MBTA police chief. Uh, I think, as we all know, uh, big loss for Arlington and big gain for the MBTA. Uh, so that said, I um, well, we, we, we can talk about what a proper fitting farewell to Fred is uh, before he goes. He'll be here till February 11th, uh, so he'll still be here for some time. Um, moving forward, my plan is for the January 12th meeting uh, of the board to come back with uh, an outline or a, a proposal of a recruitment and replacement process uh, for the board to discuss. Uh, I, no, I, I told the chairman, and I believe maybe some other board members, I really want this to be something that um, though it's a manager appointment, the process that the board is on board with and that uh, I'm comfortable with as well so that we have community buy-in to uh, the replacement and recruitment process for a new police chief. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, uh, no new business, but 
I, I wish Fred the best of luck and thank him for his outstanding service to this community. And uh, the Select Tones did uh, finish a 24th season of holiday sing-alongs that were spectacular. No other new business, sir. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Ms. Your Bond. solos were especially <laughs> Uh, thankfully, no one had to sit through any <laughs> solos from me, Mr. Ray. Um, thank you. I'll say thanks. So thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, Long-term planning committee has been meeting in uh, advising Adam on the budget that he's writing, and it has not been without um, some candid and passionate conversations. And uh, I think Adam is a bit on the spot in terms of, well, I wouldn't say that. Adam has been given a lot of opinions they don't all agree and uh, he's going to get to make a draft budget out of that um, I'm s there's at least some conversation that um, the, the Board of Selectmen should participate in like as a whole in a, in a future step related to the multi-year plan going forward and I'm personally still um, I want to talk to a few I, I want to continue my conversations with the various chair, chairs and members of other committees before I actually come forward and make a recommendation but I'll say it's been a very productive and involved um, process this year thank you mr. John. Joe. no new business thank you um, I also have um, no new business uh, other than I would like to wish everyone a uh, happy holidays and um, thank everyone um, in the town, but particularly um, all our town employees for the work they've done over the past year, and I hope they um, can get some time to relax with their families. So, thank you very much. So, uh, just, I, I want to thank the town manager for a huge gala party that he threw for the town employees that Joe and I stopped by for, and it was the best lunch I think I've ever had at something like from from uh, what's it called? Uh, Blue Ribbon. Blue Ribbon. Mm. I, I really wasn't expecting on eating, and after my second plateful, I was asked to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but it was jammed. I think it's a huge credit to the manager how many employees stop by. Um, I've been to a number of these, uh, and that's the biggest crowd I've certainly ever seen at, at one of these. They may have seen the menu in advance. I didn't, but that was very well done, Adam. We, we felt we had to hold up the end for those of you who were stuck working in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> so move to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Close.